Welcome to Rayma Melbourne Online Church. Tonight we're, we're having an Eagles prayer meeting. So we're going to be teaching on prayer tonight. You know, the Lord really has given me this as an assignment. I've really felt a, an urgency to do this. And we have an Eagles prayer meeting once a month in our church where we all come together and, and we pray. We do it at the end of every month. And it's a really wonderful meeting. We come in and we fuel a little bit in the Word of God. And then we just come together and we begin to pray. We don't come in with a prayer list. We come to get the prayer list off the Holy Spirit. And then we all come together and we begin to pray. We have some wonderful meetings. And, and the most wonderful thing at the end of those meetings, every single time, we, we really, as the meetings come into a close, we begin to experience the peace of God. And we kind of all sit, I think, for maybe 30 minutes or at least 20 minutes to 30 minutes every time just sitting in that peace. Sometimes there's a little bit more utterance that come or we just sit and enjoy the ministry in worship as Lynn leads us in, in praise and worship and it's beautiful. But I've really felt God's assignment for this and the importance of, of having this meeting tonight. I really believe God is wanting to raise up a real strong prayer force in our nation for this time, right at this time. And, you know, I remember years ago, we, we used to go every year to a meeting with Billy Brim in prayer in the United States in Branson. And I remember one year as we had all gathered into that prayer assembly, Billy came out and she was sharing with everyone how she'd seen eagles coming around the property of where she was that day as she was praying and studying for that meeting that night. And as she began to share it, she began to sing this song. As the eagles are gathered before the battle, the war, the war is won. And I tell you, as she began to sing that song, the Lord spoke so strong into my heart. And he said, I want you to go back to Melbourne and start an Eagles prayer meeting. Well, you know, we did. We, we gathered. There was a few of us gathered together every Tuesday. <clears throat> and, you know, just because you gather together doesn't mean you are together. It took us a little, maybe a few months of coming together each week, gathering together for us to really come together and begin to flow together in the Holy Ghost in prayer. But I'll tell you over the 20 years that we came together every Tuesday, we, we were so strong together that we knew where that utterance was going to flow. And whereas we went off in an assignment and we were looking for more utterance, we literally knew in one another who had the next part of that utterance so that we could begin to flow and finish the assignment that God had for us that day. <clears throat> you know, assignments of the Spirit are very important. God has assignments, it, just as he had one for Jesus. You know, 1 John 3, 8 says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. He had an assignment of why he was to come into the earth, what he was to do into the earth. And he said on that cross, when he had finished that assignment, he said, it is finished. Well, you know, for any assignment, you've got to have the fuel for it. For any aircraft, when we get on an aircraft, we're going to a location. Hopefully, we're going to that location. And as we get on that aircraft and it's taken out to that runway, that aircraft has to have fuel in it for it to be able to take off, for it to travel and to land in that assignment. 
And so it's no different with prayers. We have to have fuel. And the fuel for us is the word of God. So we come together in that word. We begin to fuel. And that's really tonight what I want us to do is to fuel together in the word of God. And so as we start this journey of eagles, prayer meeting online, I want to share a few quotes of men who have so inspired me in prayer that I want to share them with you. You know, every time that I come to a prayer time, I go over these quotes, constantly go over them in my heart. And so I'd like to share them with you. And so, Father, as we enter this journey tonight together, we thank you. And we praise you for the Holy Spirit, the one who comes to lead us and guide us. And we yield ourselves to him. I yield myself to him, that I bring forth what's on his heart and he's bringing forth to us what's on your heart, that we, we come together in an assignment so that your will is done not only in our lives or our families, but in our states and territories in the nation of Australia. And as you give us assignments for different nations in the world, that, Father, that we're listening, we're yielding ourselves so that your will can be done in the earth as it is in heaven to the glory of God in Jesus' name. You know, Pastor Hagen, who pastors a church, Rama Family Church in Tulsa, in America, he said prayer is the engine room of the church. And I, I, I so love that quote. And the engine means, it means an engine is one that's producing movement. So we know as we come together in prayer that that movement is going to come wherever that prayer is being directed by the Spirit of God. Andrew Murray said prayer is the pulse. It's the heartbeat of our life. It's the heartbeat of a church. It's the heartbeat of a family. It's the heartbeat of a nation. And Andrew Murray said the enemy will use all his power to lead a Christian, to lead a minister, to neglect prayer. And again, he said, we need a new intense and radical commitment to prayer. E.M. Bounds said, we need a prayerful leadership and we must have it. Glory be to God. Finney said, the love of the brethren and the unity are intensified the more that we come together and pray. George Whitfield called for people to join together in prayer. Wigglesworth, my faith hero, he says prayer links us to our lovely God, to our abounding God, to, to our multiplying God. And Spurgeon, this is one I use regularly, he was asked one time, what is the secret of your success? And he said, knee work, knee work, knee work. Billy Graham, and you know, I've been led by the Spirit just to ponder lately on his ministry and how God used him in the earth. Billy Graham says, we can change the course of events if we get on our knees in believing prayer. He said, prayer should not nearly be an act, but an attitude of our life. Hallelujah, that spoke to my heart. He was asked about the most important steps in his preparation for any evangelistic outreach. And he answered with this, there are three very important things that matter to any outreach. He said, number one is prayer. Number two is prayer. Number three is prayer. And he said, a man or a woman is more powerful on their knees than behind the most powerful weapons that have ever been developed. My goodness, that is some quote. And that a nation is more powerful when it unites in earnest prayer. 
You know, Jesus said this, ask in prayer, believing, and you will receive. And God, we know, answers prayers. How do you know that, Pastor Eileen? I know that just from Psalm 91, because he said, if you call on me, I will answer you. And I believe that when we pray, that God answers our prayer. You know, another quote of Billy Graham, and I really wanted to share this with you tonight. He said, if I had it all to do over again, he said, I'd spend more time in prayer and more time in meditation. He said, the most powerful weapon against a trial is your prayer. And he said, the most effective, valuable gift that you can give to someone you love is time on your knees in prayer. I thought about that. You know, I love my family so much. I spend a lot of time praying over my family. And I love my church family. I love them so much that for me, I love to pray for them. I love to pray for their children and their grandchildren. And he's saying, that's the most effective gift that I can ever give my children, that I can ever give my grandchildren, that I, I can ever give my church family. That is the most valuable gift is to pray for them. Hallelujah. Well, you know, as we go into a little bit of teaching tonight, I'd like you to go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And I'll, I'll, I want to read verse 7 and 8 and verse 11. Matthew 7 and verse 7. He said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receive and him who seeks finds and to him that knocks that door will be opened. And he said, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, church, underline that in your Bible, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give to those that ask of him? How much more? You know, does our God enjoy giving to us when we ask of him? How much more does he give to us? Well, you know, when you ask God, you're inviting God. You're giving him an invitation to intervene in a life, in a situation, in a nation. When you begin to ask him, invite him into that situation. I really want you to listen to this and pay attention to this tonight. Andrew Murray said this. There is a world with its needs entirely dependent on and needing to be helped by intercession. He said there is a God in heaven with a sufficient supply to meet those needs. There is a church with a wonderful calling and sure promises waiting to be roused. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you begin to pray, when you begin to speak the word of God, you're staring something. Something starts to move. Something starts to become active. And he said we're to ask in faith, knowing something, knowing that our heavenly father wants to move so much more in those areas. You know, just as a natural per parent wants to bless a child, Jesus said, how much more does your heavenly father want to bless you? And we need to know that in our hearts. And we need to have faith in that, that how much more does God want to bless us? You know, that's a real key in our life to receiving, that you really know that in your heart. You know, the disciples watched Jesus' prayer life. 
They see in the outworking of his prayer life, the miracles, the different things that happen because of his prayer life. And in Luke chapter 11 and verse 1, they didn't say, teach us how to prophesy. They didn't ask him to teach them anything else. They said, teach us how to pray. And that's my heart every morning. Holy Spirit, help me to pray today. Help me to fulfill the assignment that God has in prayer today. Help me, direct me in the paths in prayer that I need to be taking in my prayer life. I don't just want to keep praying the same things. I want the direction, Holy Spirit. I want the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God to come to my heart so that I can launch out in the deep in my prayer time. And the disciple says, teach me, teach us how to pray. Do you know prayer is a learnt experience? That's why you've got such wonderful teachers on prayer in the, in the body of Christ where their, their heart is to teach, to inspire people in the, in the throne room in prayer. And you know, well, we could say that, well, are they called? No, we're all called to pray. We're all called to yield to God. That isn't some special ministry on someone's life. It's just that someone's made it special to their life because of the passion. They want to instill that passion in other people. But God's called us all to pray, all to come to him and pray. In fact, Jesus told the disciples, pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, kept holy is your name. Your kingdom come and manifest in the hearts and the lives of the people that we pray, Father, today as it is in heaven. Let it be in their lives, that your will be done in their lives as we pray today in Jesus' name. And we thank you for our daily bread. We thank you for bread from heaven to feed us as we go to the word of God today. Oh, Father, thank you for it. And he told them to pray that way. But prayer is not only taught, but it's caught as you spend time with those that really know the presence of God, to sit around them and draw from them. And of course, that's what inspired the disciples because they knew that Jesus had an experience. He was in the presence of the Father so much earlier than they got up of a morning. He'd spend time with God. He'd give himself in prayer all the time. He never did anything without it was birthed in prayer, without knowing the Father's will, because he said, I only speak the words I hear my Father say. I only do the things I see my Father do. How did he, he know that from the time that he yielded himself to God in prayer? And we know in Luke 3, 21, that when Jesus prayed, the heavens opened opened. Oh my goodness, do you realize when we pray that we can bring rain, the heavenly rain over areas, over nations, over people? And it says when he prayed, the heavens opened. And what happened? The power came, the anointing came, there was a flow of God that came. That's why it's so important right now that a prayer force is raised up in our nation, praying for this nation, for heaven's rain to pour over our nation, to pour over the schools, to pour over the universities, to pour over our government. Oh, to, to come to those cabinet meetings in Canberra and for the reins of the Spirit to pour over those meetings. And as the Lord begins to lead us to pray for nations and to pray for Israel, that the reins of the Spirit would pour over these nations, that the anointing of God would flow. 
and that people's lives would be touched and changed and transformed. And you see, because of this, because of the openings of what it can create, an opening for a miracle, an opening for a turnaround, the devil will try and mess up your prayer life as much as he can. He'll try to keep you awake at night. He'll try to keep you uh, uh, distracted by much work. He'll try to keep you distracted. Why? Because you, as Billy Graham said, are so much more powerful on your knees praying for the kingdom of God to come on someone's life. I'm telling you, that's what happened to us. When my husband began to coach a Baptist church, young soccer group of boys, we just went down there and he was coaching them. What we didn't know was a group of them had started to gather together every week and pray for us. And we didn't know why all of a sudden we, we felt a change in us. No longer were we as interested <laughs> in going to discos. My husband lost interest in dancing like John Travolta. <laughs> Glory to God. But our hearts began to change. And then we started seeking. But at that point, we didn't know what we were seeking. But we were, there was a change taking place in us. What was happening? They were praying. The anointing was coming on us. The rain was coming on our hearts and a change for us as a family. And my goodness, that change didn't just come on us. It came on all my husband's family. It came on all my family. It came on friends around us. Glory to God. That's what happens when people get together and they begin to pray. And so that's why the devil will distract your prayer any way that he can to stop that prayer force from going through. You know, James 5, 16. In fact, let's just turn there, hey? This is a scripture I just love and I, I do. I go to it a lot. I love it. It inspires me every time that I go to it. James chapter 5, and I'm going to read from, let's see where we'll pick it up, hey? He says, confess your, to one another, therefore your faults, and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. And here's where we want to really it come in on. It says the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Now that power that he makes available, it says is dynamic in its working. Oh, glory to God. And then he says Elijah was a human being with a nature such as we have, with feelings and affections like ours. In other words, he was telling you that Elijah didn't have something that you haven't got. He was just like you, just like me. And he prayed earnestly for it not to rain. And no rain fell on the earth for three years and six months. And then he prayed again and the heavens supplied rain and the land produced its crops as usual. Oh my goodness, what, what do we pray for? The rains of the Spirit to come upon people's lives, to come upon a school, to come upon a university, to come upon our government. We need to be praying for our government, that the wisdom of God would guard and guide the decisions that they're making concerning our nation. But he says in James 5 that your prayer makes something happen, makes it starts building for, for, for something to happen. It makes power available that's dynamic and it's working. Church, listen to this in the Passion Bible. Oh no, let me go to the, me the message first. James 5.16, it says the prayer of a person living right with God is something powerful to be reckoned with. Elijah, for, exist, for instance, he was human just like you, just like me. He prayed hard that it wouldn't rain and it didn't, not a drop for three and a half years. Then he prayed 
that it would rain and it did. Now listen to this. It says the showers came down and everything started growing again. Hallelujah. You can bring the reins of the Spirit on dry ground, on dry hearts, and something begins to grow again. Hallelujah. As in the Passion Bible, it says, then pray for one another to be instantly healed, for tremendous power is released through a passionate, heartfelt prayer. You know, Zechariah 10, 1 says, pray for the rain, ask for the rain to come down, that growth would come. You know, sometimes we see people get born again, and then we they get distracted and their hearts grow a little dry. And instead of judging them, instead of acknowledging where they are, if we began to pray and get that rain over the seed that's in their hearts, that would start some movement again inside of their life. Amen. That's so exciting, church. And you know, that's why the attacks come on us. That's why he tries to attack you, assault you, cause storms to happen in our life because he wants to stop your prayer life. He wants to stop you. And I like something Brother Copeland said years ago. He said, if he can stop the word in you, he can stop you. He can stop your prayer time. You know, our prayer time it should be such an adventure every day because the Holy Spirit leads you. You know, my prayer time of a morning is I prepare in prayer before I pray. What does that mean? I put on some music. I spend time worshiping God, praising God. I praise him in English. I praise him in tongues. And sometimes it can be for a little longer than I, I anticipated. Sometimes it's a little shorter. But there's a point where all of a sudden it, I, I moved in to the assignment of God. I moved in to a position where the Spirit of God takes a hold with you and begins to move with you in to where he's directing your prayer that day. Or he, he's moving you into a scripture or moving you into to a word that's very appropriate for where he is leading that time that you have with the Lord that day. And so you have to be aware of the enemy's devices. It, the Bible says don't be ignorant of his devices. He's got some very real devices to try and stop us being, being fruitful in our prayer life. You know, it's a, you know, I was thinking about this today. And I thought I wanted to share it with you. You know how they tell you that when people go to the gym, they get those little happy endorphins that make them come out all happy. Well, you know, I thought about that and I thought, wow, I get those little happy endorphins when I come out of my prayer time. Really, I, it's, I can't begin to tell you what it's doing in me. I can be praying for, for the nations or I can be praying over our prime minister, but something's happening in me and it's exciting. And I come out of that, out of that time of prayer, just so refreshed and so aware of the presence of God in me, on me, and wanting to work through me. And you know, when you face things, don't let the devil pull you out of prayer. Don't let him pull you out the word. You know something, even for me as a minister, I have to have personal time in the word and in devotions every day after I pray. I, I mean that I'm going into the word, not looking for a sermon. I'm going into it to feed me, the woman, because I need feeding. I need to be built up in the word. I need to be strengthened in my own prayer as well. So that's important. You cannot allow the devil to do that. You have to take authority over him and apply the blood of Jesus over your life and bind him in the name of Jesus and bind the assignments of hell and bind the evil one over your life and tell him that you're washed in the blood. 
You're qualified for the blessings of God. You're qualified to enter in to whatever God has for you that morning. And don't let him pull you out. You are very important to the purposes of God being fulfilled in this earth at this moment. You are. Our, our faith heroes were important, but you're a hero of faith to someone and your prayer is very important to people's lives, to nations, to children in school. It's very important. And so God is calling you. He's calling us to rise up now and to yield and allow him to use us in prayer. Just like he sent Jesus to the earth with a mission. We were the mission. And he came. He never lost sight of it. Did he have the temptations? The Bible says he did. Did he have the attacks? The Bible says he did. No different than us. And so you have to make a decision. Yeah, you're going to face some things, but I'm going to arise and get over them in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we apply the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. And we go to our Father and we seek him in Jesus' name. And you know what? An attack of the devil, it's device of it. I'll show you what the device of it is. Do you want to hear? Are you sure you do? You know, the device of the devil is to stop you, to slow you down, and to get you focused saying, why God? Why God? How come God? How come God? And you know what happens? You start losing your energy. You start slowing up. And eventually, if you don't do something about that, he stops you. Till it can be a week, a month, even months where you haven't prayed, you haven't read the word. Don't be ignorant. They're very real devices that he used because God using you in prayer is very powerful in the earth right now. Glory be to God. Not just your pastor, not, not just an itinerant minister, but you. You're important to the plan of God right now. Your prayers, your time. Hallelujah. So when we face things, don't focus on them. You know, it says in Philippians, forget those things that are behind you. You, you literally have to do that. And you have to, when you're facing a trial, you have to just forget about it and put your focus back on God. And I'll tell you one good thing. If you're going through a trial, crank up your prayer life. Pray more. Spend more time in the word. And I'll tell you why. Because number one, it will strengthen your spirit. And the Bible says the strong spirit of a man will sustain him. It will stop the devil and his schemes against you and it will open you up to the ability and flow of God in your life. Hallelujah. So James says the effectual fervent prayer of a man who knows his rights makes power available. Are you ready in prayer to start doing that? Listen to this from a few different translations. It may... It makes much available. Another one says it exerts a mighty influence. Another one says very powerfully productive is the prayer of a righteous man. Another one says it carries great power and wonderful results. <laughs> Glory to God. It says it secures great blessings from God. So we need to be believing that when we go into prayer. Hebrews says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You know, it also says those that, that, that give themselves to the Spirit, from the Spirit they reap a life. They reap strength. They reap from the Spirit of God in their own life because you're investing yourself into the Spirit of God. He begins to put something back into your life. Even when you invest into the Word, the Word is investing into you. As you give yourself to the Word, the Word is giving back to you. Glory be to God. And so it's really important. And you know what? As we start 
winding up a little bit right now. I could go all night. I love prayer. It's my passion. Mark eleven twenty eight 28 and 30 says, Come unto me, all you who labor on a heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. You know, in the Message Bible, listen to this. He said, I'm going to put my name in there. Eileen, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me and watch how I do it. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. In the Passion Bible, he says, Eileen, come to me and I will refresh your life for I am your oasis. Wow. Simply join your life with mine. You know, he says in the Passion, I will refresh your life. Do you know what that means? I'll recharge you, give you new strength, restore and energize you. In the message Bible, he said, you'll recover. That means you'll get strength back. You'll get back on your feet. And that's what God wants for each one of our lives. We come in the name of Jesus to pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We come to you. What a privilege as we yield to you, that you would use us, Father, in the earth, that you would use us in prayer. Oh, Holy Spirit, help us. Help each one of us in our prayer life. Help us to be more effective than we've ever been before. Help us to be more sensitive to your leading, to your guiding us. Oh, Cause our eyes to see where you want us to move into assignments in prayer, our ears to hear as you're wanting to speak through us into the nations, into our nation, over our prime minister. Father, we thank you. We praise you that how much more do you want to bless us in our prayer time? And Lord, we yield ourselves to you. And we praise you. We honor you. You're the shepherd of your sheep. And we give you all the glory. Father, we say this tonight. If you can use anyone, use me. Use me for your glory. Use me, Father. I yield my heart, my time. I yield myself to you. And I pray, Father in heaven, my Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and manifest in me, in my prayer time, in my life as it is in heaven that I fulfill the will of God in my prayer time, that I fulfill the will of God in this earth as it is in heaven. And I ask you, Father, to give us that daily bread. Lord, you said that man cannot live by natural bread alone, but by every word that comes from the heart of God. Father, we seek your word for this hour. We seek your word. We seek your word for this prayer time. We seek your leadership in this prayer time, leading us, guiding us, Father, into the places that you desire that we would pray. And we thank you for the bread so that as you give that bread to us, that we can pray that out over people's lives, over nations in Jesus' name. Oh, we give you all the glory. We thank you that you are a God that is for us and not against us. We thank you that you love us. And Father, I thank you and praise you for the privilege <laughs> And it is a privilege to join our hearts with you in prayer that the Holy Spirit would use us, that you would use us to pray. 
and I want to be used. I want to be more effective. And I know that's the cry of people's hearts. We thank you and praise you tonight. We praise you for a fresh anointing. We give you glory. On S.C. Noi me anto ne in kusi si ima. No ne 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 me si a yamanuku. Bre ne in kusi si ne in to ne 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 me si a. O lehina mano ne in kusi si na manuku. Bre ge gishe no mano ge gishe no ma. A le in so ne in do in kusi ma. Ma anto ne in kusi ma. Bre ge no ma si a yama. Father, I pray for our Prime Minister. I pray, Father, that you would touch his heart and touch his life. I pray for a refreshing for him. I pray for strength for him, that he can run the race. Oh, Lord, that he can run the race, that he can finish the course in the name of Jesus. And we pray for a supernatural refreshing to come upon his life in the name of Jesus. Oh, so ne enko ne impo ma anto me si kena ma no ke kishino ma brege kishino ma an so ne ne me siya. Help him to cast the care over on you, Father, that he's casting care over over on you, but is receiving from you wisdom, direction. Oh, Father, that your wisdom is God in his heart, God in the decisions that he and his cabinet make over this nation in Jesus' name. Oh, si in kosima brege gishin o ma no ke kishin o ma me enso ma anto in kosisi ima me ni ke kishin o ma. You planted him into this nation. You planted him into that role for such a time as this and we thank you that he's a man that knows you and we thank you for the anointing of God to come on him and break off any weariness from his life from the labor in his office in Jesus name and we pray father for the peace of God oh the peace of God we thank you for leading him we thank you for unity in his cabinet, unity with the premiers of every state and territory in this land. Father, that right now as they come together making decisions over this nation, that it wouldn't be about their politics. It would be about the recovery of our nation. It would be about the recovery of the people in each state and territory in Jesus' name, that their politics are left behind but their hearts unite for the recovery the refreshing the rebuilding of this nation in the name of Jesus. Oh, so me hinto ne inkosima brege gishin o ma and that each session that they come together, we come against the decisive ways of the enemy to try and divide their tongues, trying to divide their language in the name of Jesus. But we pray that as they come together, as they talk together, as as they, they, they look at ways to help this nation, that your wisdom speaks into those meetings, that your wisdom directs those meetings. And we pray and ask you for the reins of the Spirit to come upon those cabinet meetings. The reins of the Spirit, Father, that egos are set aside, politics are set aside with one thing in mind for the recovery of a nation and the recovery of the people. We pray for healing in our land. We thank you for it, Father. On sone in kuni imputa iso ampani in kusima brege gishin o ma no ke gishin o ma. Oh Lord, I call on you and I pray for, for our, our nation to recover financially. I call on you. How much more, Father, 
We thank you for the recovery. We thank you for business investments into Australia, business investments into the states, into the territories. Father, to enlarge the platform for people to be able to get back to work in the name of Jesus quickly, in Jesus' name. Oh, si inconi imposia, brege gisha shanoma, ni inkosima sonomanuku, brege gisha no ma, en sonanama soto, inkosima, mi inkosima. We call for those business investments, for the economy of this nation to come back up in the name of Jesus. Oh, inkosisi imanamanuku, brege gisha. Shinoma in Sone in Cosima, Bregegish Shinomia, me into me in Sonanama Soto, in Cone in Posia. We pray for the reins of the Spirit to come upon our land in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, just as, as James 5 said in the Message Bible. That as that fervent man, that righteous man began to pray that everything began to grow again. We thank you for our economy to grow again. We thank you for jobs to grow again in the name of Jesus. Oh, sonananama, the reins of the spirit. We call for those supernatural reins to fall on every state, on every territory. Father, we thank you for it. We draw on that rain we call on that rain and how much more father do you want to bring that rain to our nation in Jesus name thank you for the rain thank you for the rains of the spirit supernatural rains father oh son in in emisia bregegishin oma an soni in kosima bregegishishini impo me ento me ento me in Sima sono manuku bregegishinoma and seed that's been sown in people's hearts, seed of the gospel that's been sown into the hearts of people in our land. We pray that every place that that seed has been sown for rain to come on the seed, rain to come on the seed in the name of Jesus, that that seed will begin to grow, that that seed will begin to produce fruit that glorifies you, my heavenly Father. Oh, sonananamaso, bregegishinomanukegishinoma. Oh, Oh, we give you all the praise, all the glory in Jesus' name. We, we are going to be praying over the next few days. I have a, something in my heart that I'm going to write out when I finish this time tonight. But if you want to become part of our prayer force, all the information to text us, to email us is, is down below. You'll see it below. Please contact us if you want to become a part of that prayer force. And we'll send out straight away uh, those things that I'm feeling in my heart right now that we need to send out to prayers. We want to be a force for the kingdom of God. We want to make power available that is dynamically working in our nation for the salvation of people, for the healing, for miracles. We want a miracle turnaround in this nation. We want to turn around in, in the economy. We're calling business people to invest into our nation so that we begin to flourish with jobs opening up. Well, I, I, I thank you for being with us tonight. There's so much more, but I'm going to, what's well, in my heart, I'm going to get down. And if you want to become a part, please feel free to contact us. And I look forward to sharing with you again. You have a wonderful week. And just know that God loves you. You know, the very reason that Jesus came to this earth was because of you because God loves you, because his eyes are on you, his ears are open to you, and his heart is extended towards you. So I want you to know that today. 
and I want you to have a great week and just know that Pastor John and I are praying for you. Glory be to God. We'll bless you all and have a great week.